Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord for another time in His presence tonight. We thank Him for everything He has done for us and for all things He's been doing in our lives. And it's another time of um, Bible study. Uh, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved, a watchman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we are here tonight to divide the word of truth, especially in this time that all manner of information are flying all over the world, all manner of theories and some other things, and all other arguments. But all what we need to do is to look into the perfect law of liberty. The word of God is the perfect law of liberty. So that's why we are here tonight to look into the perfect law of liberty and to continue therein, and to continue therein, because Bible, the word of God has enjoined us that the, this word shall not depart out of our mouth. So tonight, before we continue in this session of the Bible study, I want to say you are welcome, everyone. Those who have been joining, I say you are welcome, and the Lord will bless you. Your life will never remain the same after tonight's uh, teaching. And you shall be greatly blessed in Jesus' name. Shall we say a word of prayer? Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity tonight. We thank you for drawing us into your presence. We thank you for bringing us closer to you to come and learn at your feet. Father God Almighty, we bless your holy name. May your name be highly exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you for keeping us thus far. We want to thank you for everything and for all things you have done for us. We thank you for your safety. We thank you for your protection. Lord God Almighty, thank you for showing us mercy, especially at this time. Lord, we thank you for divine preservation. We thank you for divine exception. We thank you for divine assistance. Lord, we thank you for remembering us, O oh Lord, for good. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we continue in the session of tonight's Bible study, Holy Spirit divine, come and have your way in the name of Jesus. Continue with us in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, open our eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, give us insight into your word tonight in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, the entrance of your word giveth light, giveth understanding unto the simple. Lord God Almighty, let light, let the light of your word shine upon our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. And our understanding will never be the same again. Thank you, glorious Father. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. God the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, you are welcome to tonight's meeting. Glorify yourself and bless your people. And let your name be highly exalted forever and ever. Thank you, everlasting Father. I submit my spirit, soul, and body unto you, Lord. Only the thing that you have commanded, those are the things that will proceed out of me. In the mighty name of Jesus, use me tonight as a mouthpiece. And let, you, let the spiritual needs of your people be met. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father, for we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, you are welcome. Everyone, you are welcome tonight. Uh, before we continue, I want us to sing the, the hymn. We can sing it together. Just follow the lyrics. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. The precious fire. Shall find 
near the cross in the name of Jesus. Especially in this period. All we need to today closer to is the cross and uh, the celebration of the Passover of our Lord Jesus Christ had begun, uh, had begun as we know. So it's, it's very timely to sing this song. It's very timely to sing this song at this time. Even singing it every day, every hour, uh, in our private in our private time, I mean, it's worth it's worth more than that. And it is my prayer, the name that is above other name, that God Almighty will keep us near the cross. Nothing, no devil, no coronavirus, no demon shall pluck us out from His hand. In the name of Jesus. So we continue in the word of God tonight as we look into the, as we, as we treat the topic, we are going to be sharing together the topic tonight, pressing towards the mark, part one. Pressing towards the mark, part one. Pressing towards the mark, part one. And the anchor scripture for tonight, the anchor scripture for tonight is Philippians chapter three. Philippians chapter three, verse 12 to 15. Philippians chapter three, Verse 12 to 15. And it is my ultimate prayer tonight in the name of Jesus that God will keep us near that cross in the name of Jesus. No devil, no demon will pluck us out of his hand in the precious name of Jesus. Pressing towards the mark. Pressing towards the mark. And the Bible says from verse 12, I will read from verse 12 and then to 13. The Bible says, I mean to 15. The Bible says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that by if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That is the, the, the inspirational, I mean, the, the, the anchor verse for tonight. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And verse 15 says, Let us therefore, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in by anything be ye otherwise minded, 
God shall reveal even this unto you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word tonight in the name of Jesus. Brethren, it is pertinent, it's very, it is very, very pertinent to be reminded that we are running a race so that we don't get carried away with all the distractions of the season. So that we don't get carried away with all the distractions of the age. There are, you know, there are a lot of things, a lot of information going on here and there. You know, if you sit with your television from morning to evening, you know, especially in this period of shutdown, lockdown, if you sit, you will find things to listen to from morning to evening. To the extent that it is possible for somebody to see with television from morning to evening and forget that he has, no, he has, not, even read, he has not even read a, Bible, a portion of the Bible in a day. That is why we are bringing this word by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to remind us, to remind us, to remind us that we should not be carried away with all manner of what is happening. All manner of what people are saying this time around. I'm not saying we shouldn't pay attention to information. Information is very powerful. Because if somebody is not informed, the person will definitely be deformed. So we, read, we need information. But what I'm trying to say tonight is that we need to get, we need to be conscious that we are running a race. We are running a race. There is a race that is set before us. Like the word of God has said, we are, there is a race that is set before us. And uh, uh, so, uh, so that we keep running, we keep running, we keep moving, we keep, we keep doing the things that will make us not to be willing, that will make us not to be tired, that make us not to be discouraged. So that we keep encouraging ourselves in the word of God. Hallelujah. So what am I saying tonight? Sense of God. This race is, a, is collective. But highly individualistic in nature. All of us, especially those that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are in a race. And mind you, it looks as if it's collective. We are not competing with one another. We are not competing. It's a, if at all it's co co collective, if we are still not competing with one another. But all of us, we are running to win, to win a prize. We are running towards a mark. That is to say, it is not a dash or a marathon, but a race with the hand at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, especially for those who will finish well. And it is my ultimate prayer for everyone tonight, including myself, that we will finish well in the mighty name of Jesus. That we will finish well in the mighty name of Jesus. The way you start a thing is not as important like the way you finish it. You're, you might not get the accurate, the, the proper speed in the beginning of the race. But we should not forget that the hand is very, very important. That is why the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. And the Bible says, they that on the right to the hand, the same shall be saved. So God, or our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, has intention, he has interest in the way we are going to finish the race. Hallelujah. So, brethren, tonight we know we are going to read, I want to read another word of God to us. And, uh, and I want us to read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I mean chapter 9 rather, verse 24 to the Bible says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. You are not going to run part of it. You are going to run everything. We are to run everything. You are not going to run part of it. You are not going to run portion of it. We are to run all. The Bible says, Know ye not. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but won't receive the price? So run that ye may obtain. Run that ye may obtain. We should run so that we can always, so that we may obtain the price. We should run that we may obtain the, the, the price. We should run that we may obtain the trophy that is waiting for us, the crowns that are waiting for us in heaven. And verse 25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. No, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, 
but we are incorruptible. Hallelujah. We are incorruptible. That's why if you want to know the, the, the strategies of a race, the strategies and the and, and the, 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 the way one should kick, kick start a race or to finish a race, if we have somebody like Usain Bolt, I think you'll be able to you'll be able to tell us some things. But those are the things to obtain, to obtain corruptible gold on the on the head. But the race that we are talking about is not Olympic. It's not Olympic, it's not an international tournament. It is eternal tournament. It is eternal race. Eternal race. It is eternal race. The Bible says further that I therefore so wrong. I therefore so wrong. I therefore so wrong. Not as uncertainly. Not as uncertainly. I not as uncertainly. So fight high. Not as one that beated the hair. Not as one that beated the hair. But I keep under my body. And some of this, remember that, but I keep under my body, I bring it into suggestion, that is, I bring it into discipline, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway, God forbid. So that's why tonight, by the grace of God, so that's why I'm, we are bringing this word of God to remind us. So that we don't get it, we don't get carried away with all the activities or the things going on in the world right now. We don't get carried away. We don't get carried away. That's why I have said it in the beginning that I'm not saying we should not pay attention to the things around us. We should not pay attention to what is, that what what the, the, they are saying on the news. But we should pay attention to where to what is more important. Like, can I say more important? Uh, uh, permit me to say more important because this is where we are going to. This is a matter of our eternity. This is a matter of where we are going to spend the rest of our lives. That's why it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the number of years we have spent on earth. The Bible says a thousand years is like a day before our God. A thousand years. A thousand years is like a day before him. So we should definitely know that it doesn't matter the number of years we have, we are, we have spent or we are going to spend on this earth. We are going to spend more than that uh, in heaven. So what does it mean tonight? What am I, what am I actually talking about? When I'm talking about pressing towards the mark, what I'm actually trying to bring to our attention, or what am I trying to point our attention to tonight, it means that we are. It means that we are striving. It means striving for excellence or mastery, bearing in mind, bearing in mind the awaiting prize at the hand. That's verse 25 of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. The Bible says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible incorruptible crime. What am I trying to say? What is what is what does it mean that the word of God is telling us in that place that everyone that, is, that are running a the race, they, they put in their best. They, 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 they put in their best. They put in their, they put in their best to receive, even to receive, for, to become a master, to become a master, to become a master, to be able to have a, a, to control themselves in some time. That's why if you see those who engage in sports, uh, those who engage in a particular uh, sports activities, there are things they don't hit. They don't hit like any other person, any other group of people, any other individuals or people are hitting. They are, they have their own way of, or, or, or they have their own diet and so on and so forth. So the Bible also says, that's why also, as believer, it is not everything that should enter into us. It is not everything that should also enter into us. The Bible says, and every man that struggles for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it what? To obtain a corruptible crown, but we are an incorruptible crown. So we should bear in mind that the race that we are running, we are not just running for fun. It's not a race that we are running for fun. We are not trying to catch fun. We are, we are not trying to have fun. Oh, it's not a fun. It's a serious, it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. It's a serious business. It's a serious thing because there is a price that is waiting for us at the end of this race. That is why every one of us, we should be conscious of where we are going to spend our eternity. No, I keep emphasizing this because this is the kind of word of God that we need, especially at this time. We need to be reminded about our eternity so that we don't get carried away with the issue of the virus and all other things. I mean, how there. Well, number two, what am I trying to say tonight? It means to keep moving towards the finish line. Not considering the circumstances around us, we need to. It means to keep moving 
towards the finish line, to keep moving towards the finish line, to keep moving towards the finish line. It doesn't matter what the devil is throwing at us. It doesn't matter what we are going through. It means to keep moving towards the finish line. It doesn't matter the situations around us, whether it, the, the situations are palatable or they are not palatable, or we are going through even challenges that we could not even share with anyone, or the one we have shared even and so on and so forth. Maybe we have issues bothering our lives. The Bible says that, that we should, no matter what, we should keep moving. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, where we just read, the Bible says, Brethren, I can't know myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Brethren, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what had happened to us. Whatever happened to us yesterday has become our past tense. Whatever happened to us yesterday has become our part of our past. It's only we need to pick up the lessons there and keep moving and keep moving and keep moving. That is why it is very dangerous to be living in the past. It is very dangerous to be living in the past. That's why the Bible says, the Bible says, Bread, I can't know myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And uh, somebody, somebody said something. Somebody said that the enemy of the success of today is the success of yesterday. He said the enemies of the victory of today is the victory of, the, of yesterday. That is why we don't need to be living in the past. We don't, especially at this time, at this time, we need to be pressing towards the things that are before, that, that are currents ahead of our life, that are glories ahead of our life. There are blessings ahead of our life. There are so many things that God has put in our in our that is that has put before us, so that we keep focusing on the on the on, on what is ahead of us, what is before us, not what is behind us, not is not what is behind us. That's why the Bible says in John chapter sixteen verse thirty three. John chapter sixteen verse thirty three. The Bible says, "These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace." In the world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we should let this word of God, to, 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 uh, we should allow this word of God to encourage us, especially, to encourage us, especially at this time, to give us encouragement, especially at this time. This was, Jesus said, this thing I have spoken unto you, that in me we will have peace. It's only in Jesus we can have peace, because his name is the Prince of Peace. That's why, unfortunately, people are looking for peace where there is no peace. They are look, many people are looking for peace from WHO. Many people are looking for peace from United Nations. That is why the, the Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Not blessed, not blessed are the peacekeepers. That, uh, that's why we need, to be, we need to focus on the things that are before us. Because Jesus has conquered for us. He said, in the world, you shall have tribulation. Yeah, it's only in the world. It's only in the world we can see coronavirus. It's only in the world we can see infirmity, diseases, and, and uh, afflictions of life, and uh, sicknesses, and all those things. It's only in the world we can find them. All these things are not present in Jesus Christ. All these things are not present in Jesus Christ. That's why we need to be living in him by the day. It doesn't matter what Satan, because we live in the world, it doesn't matter what Satan is doing to our bodies in the world. Because Jesus said, ye, ye are in the world, but ye are not of the world. Ye are not of the world. So but the Bible says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, he has overcome the world. So that is to say, even it doesn't matter what is happening right now, we are not fighting to have a victory. We are fighting in victory. Because Jesus said, he has overcome. He has overcome. He has overcome for, for us. So that's why I, want, I have a word of encouragement for somebody tonight that it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what is going through you. Jesus said, he has overcome for you. I want us to position our mind. I want us to position our mind so that we can be able to have the victory that Jesus has offered for us. That's why a fight that you cannot win in your imagination, you cannot win when you, when you engage in it. A fight a fight, let me put it this way, a fight that you have not won in your heart. It's not possible for you to win it when you engage in it physically. That is why the Bible, that's why the Bible says somewhere in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. The Bible says, unto him who can do exceeding abundantly above what we ask 
and think according to the power that works in us. So there are things that have, there are, there are things we get to be, we get done by asking, and there are things we get done by using our mind. That is why we should not allow any evil. We should not allow wickedness. We should not allow any dirty things to pass through our mind. We should. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for heart of it are the issues of life. So if you are going to be pressing towards the mark, if you are going to be pressing towards the mark, we must make sure that we keep moving towards the finish line. I, 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 saw, a, I saw a clip on I saw a clip some time ago, a video on, on Facebook. This person fell. In, this, 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 uh, this, uh, this person fell in the course of, the, of running the race. Do you know this person? Instead of instead of uh, of lie down there and allow the doctors to come and carry her or the medical team to come and help her out or him, I, I I think this this person started crawling. This person crawled even up to like another one kilometer, or maybe around one kilometer or some 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 meters again. Crawled, crawled, crawling, crawling, crawling. If other people have gone, this person refused to give up. This person refused to give up. He, 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 the person kept crawling, crawling. He, when, when the person got to, got to the finish line, that's when she, the person fainted. But he, the, the race, I mean, the, 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 girl, the person made sure that the race was completed. That is why I want to say quick, quickly, you will not be commended by a race you started. You will be commended and rewarded for a race you finish. Can I repeat it? Can I put it another way? You will not be commended, you will not be rewarded or applauded for something for a race you started, but you will be you will be applauded for the race or for, for the for the victory you finally have at the end of the day. And I want to tell us that I want to remind us that Jesus is waiting for us. It doesn't matter what we are going through in this world, we should keep moving because Jesus is clapping for us. Father Abraham is Coming for us, the four living beings they are coming for us. God the Father is coming, is coming for us. Holy Spirit is strengthening us so that we, we keep moving towards the mark. We don't give up, don't quit. Don't quit. If you have somebody around you in your house, there just tell the person, Don't quit. Now, number three, it means imbibing self determination and fighting spirit to make sure you reach the finish line against all odds, against whatever happening. Against whatever happening, we should make sure that we reach the finish line. We should against all. We should we should summon our courage. We should imbibe in self. We should imbibe self determination. Be determined. Be determined. We should possess a fighting spirit. We should protect, possess a fighting spirit. We should possess a fighting spirit. We should not allow Satan and his and his hosts to to flow us. Possess a fighting spirit. I think uh, there is a saying that says. The, the world or the life or life is not nice to give you what you deserve but what you can fight for life is not nice to give you what you deserve but what you can fight for so you have to fight for your blessing you have to fight for your victory you have to fight for your glory you have to fight for your eternity that is why somewhere the Bible says in Philippians, I think Philippians chapter two verse twelve. So uh, Philippians chapter, I think somewhere like that. The, the Bible says we should we should work out our own salvation with uh, with fear and with trembling. I want to read quickly Hebrews chapter twelve verse one and two. Hebrews chapter twelve verse one and two, and the Bible says, "Wherefore sin, we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight." Let us lay aside every weight, every distraction, and let us lay away and the sin which doth easily, which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, brethren. If you if if you have forgotten about this, I, I I need to remind us this evening that there is a race that be set before you. There is a race that be set before you. You are running your race. I am running my race. So every one of us, we are engaging in race. We are engaging in our own race. We are engaging in our own race. That's why. That's why there is no competition in destiny. There's no competition in destiny. Every one of us, we are running our own. We are running ra we race. We have race that been set before us. And the Bible says in verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him? There is a joy that is set before our Father. Joy was set before our, our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right? And the same joy also has been set before us, set before him until the cross. Brethren, when you hear the word cross, cross is not something sweet. 
The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross made, made the cross to become a beautiful thing. <laughs> oh, when, that's why even the Bible says, I think, I think somewhere in one unto him that was hung, I mean, cause be the man that was hung on a tree. So there is nothing palatable on the cross, but the death of our Savior on the cross makes or made the cross to become a beautiful thing. That's why before he was before he went to the cross, one of the things he encouraged encouraged us to be doing, I mean, all to do is to carry the same cross, to carry our cross daily and follow and follow him. And I want to quickly read this one. The Bible says, and the other cross. Despising the shame. So, despise the shame. I want you to despise the shame. I want you to despise the, the pain as if it is not there. I want you to despise the discouragement as if it is not passing through your heart. I want you to despise even the, 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 whatever is coming your way as if they are not existing. But they are existing in the real sense. But the, when you despise it and you, you keep up, you keep looking at that hope that is set ahead of us, that is set ahead of you, I'm telling you, the end of it is always very glorious. And the Bible says, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus was set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So that's why, uh, that's why I said, it means imbibing self-determination and fighting spirit to make sure you reach the finish line against all odds. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when, G when our Lord and Savior went to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, I think somewhere in the book of Matthew, uh, I mean, it's in the Gospel, when he went to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, even Satan, I mean, the, the, woman, the, woman, the woman in him didn't want him even to, to, to continue the, 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 his own part of the, of the, of the matter because it was, so, it was so heavy. The Bible says he prayed to the extent that the, the, the sweat that was coming out from him, it was like a drop of, uh, of blood. Like, so he went there, he went there, he went there, so he, 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 Satan didn't want him to reach the finish line. The flesh didn't want him to reach the finish line. But he said to, he said right there in the garden, not by my will, but thy will be, be done. But thy will be, but thy will be done. He said, not by my will, but thy will be done. That's why, brethren, I want to encourage us tonight. I want to encourage us. Let us put on, let us be determined. Let us put on the fighting spirit and let us make sure. Let us make sure that even in the agony of Jesus in the garden, with like the agony of Jesus in the garden that says, let not, let not, I mean, not by my will, but thy will be, be done. But thy will be done. Let us also tell God that, Lord, I want, I want, I, I need your grace. To reach the finish line. Brethren, you must reach the finish line. I must reach my finish line. Number four, it means to deny oneself from the affections of this world. To deny ourselves from the affection of this world. That's why to deny ourselves from the affection of this world. We want to, the story about the Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane is, is you can see in the in Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 52, Luke chapter 22, 39 to 54. Hey, Matthew, I mean, John chapter 18, verse 1 to 14, and you can see the, the story, the story there. And the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Mark chapter 14, verse 32, and also in, uh, we can see also in Matthew, Ma Matthew, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 36, with Matthew chapter 36, verse 36, uh, down to around verse uh, 44. Praise the God, praise the Lord. So it means to de number four, it means to deny oneself from the affection of this world, carry the cross daily, and follow the master completely. Brethren, there is gain in following the law wholeheartedly. He said, You will, he said, you will, he said, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. There is no, it is, this is not the time to be doing one leg in, one leg out. You see that you are all in. Or you are all out. When it comes to the matter of the kingdom of God, sitting on the, on the fence is not permitted. You are keeping the midpoint. It's not allowed. This is the time we need to make up our minds, brethren. We need to make up our minds and make sure we carry our cross. We make to, and to make sure that we follow him. Bible says in Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Mark chapter 8 verse 34. The Bible says, and when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. 
let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. Also, if you read Matthew, if you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, same thing was also referenced in that place. I want us also to read Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. The Bible also has something to say pertaining, I mean, taking up our cross daily and follow him. The Bible says, and he said to them all, as he said to them all, Jesus is telling you tonight also, he's using my mouth to tell you that if any man will come after me, if any man will follow me, that is to say, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You have to take up your cross daily. You have to take up your, your cross daily and follow him. We have to deny ourselves. There are a lot of things out there that wants to take us away from his love. That want to take us away from, that want to, I mean, de, I mean, rob us from follow him. Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. And I pray in the name that is above our name, the grace to do this. God will release upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. That's why I said, the invite, to follow Jesus is an invitation to come and die. You take your you you are in him completely. No one, no, not one leg in, one leg out. You don't, you don't, you don't, you it's, it's not, it's not, you it's not permitted. Prank play pranks with Jesus, uh, play prank with eternity is not permitted. Because the matter of eternity is a serious matter. It's a serious matter that everyone must take very seriously. Hallelujah. And um, number five. Because of our time, number five, it means to present yourself as a living sacrifice. Pressing towards the mark means also to present yourself as a living sacrifice, only and acceptable unto God. Presenting yourself as a living sacrifice, ready to be to die on the on, on its altar. Presenting yourself as a living, giving yourself totally, completely unto him. The Bible says in, in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, be therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So God wants us to present ourselves to him. And I want to tell you, this race we can't run by our own strength. This pressing, we can't press by our own power. We need to press in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit. But when we don't give ourselves to the, only to the Holy Spirit, when we are not holistic in our decision to follow God, how will the Holy, how will the Holy Spirit help us? And I want to tell us tonight that Holy Spirit is there to help us. So it is not going to do, be by our own strength. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. And the Bible says, I think somewhere in Romans chapter 9, verse 16 also, that it is not of him that willeth, not of him that runneth, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. So the mercy of the Lord is available to help us. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus, that grace that we need to be able to press towards the mark, especially in this season, the Lord will give unto us. In the precious name of Jesus. The grace that we need to be able to, to deny ourselves. I mean to deny ourselves. To, and also to imbibe the fighting spirit. Also to be able to imbibe even determination. Self-determination. In order to reach on. To reach unto, on, onto, the, onto the eternity. The Lord will give unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren. This mark we are talking about. What is it all about? I will just say two things tonight. What the mark, pressing towards the mark, like the, the word of God that told us in that Philippians chapter, chapter, chapter 3, where we read, that he pressed towards the mark, chapter, chapter 3 verse 14, I pressed towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I calling of God in Christ Jesus. I calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brethren, every one of us, we have been called into a race. You have been called into this race. As the moment you give your life to Jesus, or the moment you accepted Jesus into your life as your Lord and your Savior, your race has started. So it's not a race that is going to start tomorrow. If you have given your life to Christ, 
If you have surrendered your totality to God Almighty, the race has already started for you. That is why there is no time to waste. There is no time to, I mean, to keep holding, holding forth and not, I mean, to, to folding our hands and not doing anything or not engaging in the race. That you stop running the race does not mean that the race will stop for you. We must take note of that very well also. Stopping in the race does, we not, we, it's not, doesn't mean it doesn't mean that the race will stop for you or they will stop the race because of you. All that we keep running. That is why I said the race looks collective, but it is, it is highly individualistic in nature, in perception. It's very highly, in practical sense of it. It's very, very individualistic. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not be tired. In the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will walk, they will run, they will not faint. And they will walk, they will not, I mean, they will run, they will not be weary, and they will run, they will not faint. So there is a race for us. There is a way, there is a race for us. What is, what is the mark all about tonight? The mark are the prizes. That are awaiting those who will finish the race well. The prices that are awaiting those who will finish the race well. Remember, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter, where we read in the beginning, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. I will quickly also read through it to remind us. The Bible says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. They run all. You don't run part of it. If it is four by, if it is, for example, if it is four by, if it is, I mean, relay race on, 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 on if it is normal relay race on, on, right now, you have to run all to be able to receive the prize at the end of the day. You don't run if it is 100 meters, for example, let me put 100 meters. You don't run 50 meters and begin to shout in the mid, in the middle of the field and say, oh, where's my home gold? Oh, where's my home diamond? Oh, where's my home silver? No, it doesn't work like that. The Bible says, the Bible says, no, you know that they wish run the race. They run all. Brethren, you must run all. I must run all. I must run all. But one receive the price. That is in the healthy I mean, race. So run that ye may obtain. Run that ye may obtain. Run that ye may obtain. Run so that you can obtain a prize. That is what this mark is all about. Run that you may obtain a, uh, may obtain the prize. Next week, by the grace of God, we'll be looking at the various prizes and we'll be looking at the ben I mean, I mean, the 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 the, the, um, I mean, the, the functions of, of this uh, of these prizes. We'll be looking at various prizes and some and some other things by the grace of God. Know ye not that the Bible says, so run that ye may obtain. Verse 25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. But we are incorruptible, rather, and incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as of certainty. So fight I, not as one that bitter the hair. You know, <laughs> when somebody is shadow boxing, you know, when somebody is shadow, it's not, you are not trying to shadow box. You are not trying to shadow box. You are not trying to shadow box. You, you, you have targets. The race, the race has put before us a target. There is a target ahead of us. There's a, there's, a, there's a target. There's something we are focusing on. There's something that we are looking at at the end of this race. So you are, you are not just beating the hair. You are not just shadow boxing. Just box, you are boxing your strength out without no, no target. No. But I keep under my body and bring it to subjection. Let's by the enemies. When I have preached to others, I myself should not be a caster. I myself should be a castaway. I pray for somebody tonight, including myself. We will not be, we will not become castaway. We will not go to hell in the mighty name of Jesus. God didn't create hell for us. Hell was created for Satan and his and the fallen angels. Hell was not created for for us. So number two, the mark is the reward for our fervency and endurance in the race to heaven. The mark is the reward for our fervency and our fervency and endurance in the race to heaven. Don't be tired. Don't be discouraged. Be fervent in the spirit. Keep running. Keep running. Even if, if, if it thinks that your strength is failing you, depend on, like I told us, let us plug in ourselves to the socket of the strength of the Holy Spirit. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to help us. 
Even if there are times that we feel like, oh, do I, do I, can I still continue in this race? Do I still have, do I still have the power to continue? Brethren, surrender everything to the Holy Spirit so that He can help us. Remember, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. I think I mentioned it in the beginning. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. The Bible says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. No, like our salvation, the salvation that we are talking about is in three dimensions. Salvation is in three dimensions. Salvation can be, can be categorized into three dimensions. Number one, instant salvation. Instant salvation. The salvation that we received at, at the point where we declared Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. That is the instant salvation. Then there is another one which is called continuous salvation. Continuous salvation. And that, that continuous salvation, if you read uh, if you read Philippians chapter 2, I think Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. The Bible says, Wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, walk out. Your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation. Working out, in, there is instant salvation. There is another one we call continuous salvation. Continuous salvation. That is, that is continuous salvation is Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Continuous salvation. Working out our salvation. Like Jesus told us, where I, we read in, in initially, we read somewhere, where we read in, in also in the book of in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, where Jesus encouraged, encouraged us to take up our cross and follow him. To take us our, our cross daily in, 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 in that Luke chapter 2, I mean Luke chapter 9, I mean Luke chapter 9, verse 20, 23. So, there is continuous salvation, taking up your cross daily in this race, taking up your cross daily in this race. And uh, also, also, there is also, there is eternal salvation. It is called eternal salvation. Eternal salvation. That is, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, eternal salvation. That is to say that the, the, where the Bible says, if that endeared to the end, the same shall be saved. So that salvation is the one at the end, at the feet of Jesus. When he shall, when he shall welcome us, when our Lord and Savior shall come. When the trumpet shall sound, when the trumpet shall sound, like I, I remember, I think I've said it before, not today, that that rapture does not have second batch. It's only one batch. So we have to prepare to go with this one batch. That's why I said we should be preparing for the return of our Lord and Savior. We should be preparing. We should not allow us to. We should not allow anything to distract us from preparing for this eternal salvation. If you if you have if you have got the instant salvation, you have been doing, you have been engaging the, in, in continuous salvation. The ultimate, the the finality of everything, the ultimate of everything is to make it to the feet of Jesus. That is the eternal salvation. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not you will not fall by the wayside. You will not, you will not, you will not fall by this wayside in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible even says, in somewhere in the book of Matthew chapter 24 also, that even at the very end, the very, at the end, the very elect shall be deceived. Don't be deceived. Jesus is coming back again. Judgment is real. Rapture is real. The, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is very real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. All these things are very real. Let nobody deceive us with any vain, I mean, I mean, maybe theological assertions or theories or, or doctrinal uh, or some doctrines that doesn't that doesn't hold uh, that doesn't I mean in line that are not in line with the word of God. All these things are in, are in the word of God. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Judgment is real. Rapture is very real because Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. And, and finally tonight, the last uh, outline, I mean the last uh, outline tonight, number C, that let's quickly look at some certain truths about pressing towards the mark quickly. I've just mentioned one of them. I've mentioned one of them sort of that you are not, you are permitted to walk out your spirit daily in the race. Hallelujah. You can see that's why I said it's very individualistic. You don't look at the speed of your friend to run your whole race. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, where we read, that walk out your own salvation, your own, not my own. 
Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So you are the one that will determine your speed. You are permitted to work out your speed daily in the race. That's why Jesus said, take up your cross daily. Take up your cross daily. Take up your cross daily and follow him. Take it daily and follow him. Follow in his, follow in his footsteps. Hallelujah. And number two, there is no reward for participating in the race. Only those who finish well get the prize. Mm. Think about that. There is no reward for participating in the race. That's why it's not the race of, it's not the, this one is not the race of life now. It's a race to eternity in heaven. Only, that, only those who make it at the rapture. Those are the people that be welcome home. Welcome, thou faithful, thou true and faithful servant. Welcome to the joy of, of, your, of your Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the voice of depart from me. All you workers of iniquity will not be our portion on the last day. In the last day, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, there is no reward for participating in the race. <laughs> there is no reward for participating in the race. But that's reward in finishing it well. I pray for somebody, including myself, we will finish well in the name of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26 says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring into subjection. Let my enemies. When I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. We will not become castaway in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to tap. If you have somebody around you, uh, beside you, your family, in your house there, tell the person. Um, you will not become a castaway. Don't give up on God in this race. Don't give up on God. God, now is your salvation nearer. Your eternal salvation is nearer than when we first began. Hallelujah. Number three. Until you press towards the mark. You will not be able to attain the mark and thereby get the prize. Right. Let me read again. Until you press towards the mark, you will not be able to attain the, attain the mark and thereby get the prize. They won't, they won't meet you on the, if, if you are to run 200 meters and you have only completed 150 meters. They won't come and meet you on the way and say, oh, he has tried. Oh, she has tried. Let's just, uh, oh, yeah, you tried, you tried. We will help you to summarize the rest. No, it doesn't work that way. Even in the physical race, it's, it's not done. Likewise, in the, eternal, the race to eternity, it's not done. That's why we have to endure to the end. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. We have to endure to the end. The, that's why the Bible says also in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. The Bible also says there that, Brethren, I can't know myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press towards the mark for the towards the mark towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Not in any man. Not in any not, not in any doctrines. Not in any theories. Not in any any information out there that are not of God. Because the Bible the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's only in Christ Jesus you can press towards the mark. You can it's only it's Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the and the life. That is why we must make sure that we press in Jesus. We press in Jesus. Because He has told us, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. Number four, quickly. Oh, no, number four, quickly. If you don't focus on the mark, you will you will, might miss the mark or the price. If you don't focus on the on the price, if you don't focus on the mark, you might miss the mark or the price. That is why you can't be running even in the physical race, in the earthly race. You can't be running in the earthly race and be looking at everybody. You have to focus on the finish line. Your eyes have to be on the finish line. You have to you have to look 
continually looking to the finish line. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 that looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. So our eyes has to continually be on the finish line where our Lord and, G and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is standing. That is why I said we are going to finish this race at the feet of Jesus. So our eyes have to be on him. There are a lot of distractions. Let us, let us despise the, the distractions. Let us let go the distractions. Let us focus, especially in this time we, we, that we are in, let us focus our attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. He will never fail you. And number five, you are to run. You are to run the race with eternity with Jesus in view. Let it be at the, at the very center of your mind. Why am I running this race? You have to, you have to be, you have to be, you're, you have to be reward conscious. You have to be prize conscious. You have to be conscious of the, 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 the end as you are running the race. So it is not possible. That's why I want to let us know tonight. It is not possible to miss heaven and hell at the same time. There will be only one miss. You see that you miss heaven or you miss hell. But it is ultimate. My it's my ultimate prayer tonight for everyone, including myself. That we will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. So you are to run the race with eternity in view. Run the race with eternity in view. Don't be distracted. Run the race with looking at Jesus, welcoming you home. Looking at Jesus, putting the crown on your head. Looking at Jesus, decorating you with the new glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And finally tonight, I mean second before the last, if you can't pay the price... You can't win the prize. If you can't pay the price, if you can't pay P R I C E, you can't win, you can't win P R I Z E. So if you can't pay the price, you can't win the prize. So that's why 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 have told us that, but I keep under my body and bring it to subjection. Let by Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You will not be a castaway. I will not be a castaway. In the mighty name of Jesus. And also Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Brethren, I can't know myself to have apprehended. But this one thing, this one thing, brethren, there is one thing that you need to do. That's why Jesus told Martha, 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 you have told Kumpasom about so many things. He said one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that one, and it cannot be taken from him. I mean from her, it shall not be taken away from her. Remember, even uh, uh, the psalmist, King David said something. He said one thing I have, de I have desire, and that will I seek after. So, brethren, what am I saying tonight? There is one thing you must seek after. There is one thing, one thing, but one thing I do. He didn't say many things I do. The word of God, the, 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 the Apostle Paul in that Bible passage didn't say many things I do. He said one thing I do. One thing. He said, what is the thing? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. I mean, running with focus. Running with focus. Running with eternity in view. I mean, paying the price. Paying the price. Paying the price. Brethren, you have to pay the price. I must pay the price. In, I must pay the price. And grace to be able to do that. That God Almighty will give unto us. That's why the price of winning a race is not, it's not so cheap. That's why you will see the athletes, the, those who engage in one better boxing or, or, or relay race or whatever, or, or hockey, you will see them doing constantly working out to keep to, to be in shape. Constantly working out to be in shape. Even up to now, up to now, people are still working out even in their various, uh, you know, maybe a private gym at home, all those things. Even if I thought people could not go access the, 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 the facilities in various places anymore. But people are still doing it. People are still trying as much as possible to, to keep fit, to keep in shape, to keep fit, to, to keep in shape. Likewise, during this time, we, that, that, that's why I've said to us, everyone is not shut down. Everyone is not locked down. A society in the world that is locked down or is shut down. So we should not be, we should not operate or we should not be thinking that heaven is closed. Heaven is not closed. Heaven is not closed. God wants, God still wants your that relationship. He wants to, He wants to be with you. He still requires your quiet time. He still requires your study time. He still requires your prayer and fasting time. And finally tonight, as we close, everlasting joy, 
against those who finish the race well. Doom against those who miss the mark. You will not miss the mark. And I will not miss the mark. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not miss the mark. I will, I will not miss the mark. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, I pray in the name of Jesus. This word of God tonight, pressing towards the mark part one. We find expression in our lives in the name of Jesus. And by the grace of God next week, we will continue where we stop today. By the grace of God, I want to encourage us, if you have been able to take notes or be able to write from the comments, I mean, on, on, the, on the screen there, the Lord will definitely bless you. Don't forget, we talk about what does it mean? What does the pressing towards the mark mean? And we talk about what is the mark all about? What's the mark all about? And we just talked about some salient truth about pressing towards the mark. And I pray in the name that's about that name. God, we bless you. You will not be tired. You will not be wearied in the name of Jesus. And by the grace of God, next week, we will continue. We will continue next week by the grace of God. God bless you. I want us to bow down our heads. And unfortunately, we might not be able to take... Uh, uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate to post it on the comments. Uh, you can, we can start with it. We can, I can write it out before the uh, session next week. Then we, we, I can answer them as we continue in the part two. And I pray the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you have any question, just post it on the comments. I will pick it up from there. And then we, uh, we, we, might, like, we might also be able to, to start with it next week. So this teaching is to be continued next week with part two. I want us to pray as we bow down, bow down your heads wherever you are. Father God Almighty, we thank you for tonight. We lift your name on high, be that exalted in Jesus' name. We thank you for your word that has come unto us. Father, we are asking for the grace to continue to press towards the mark. Father, we are asking for the strength to continue to press towards the mark. We will not be tired. We will not be wearied in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray in the name that is above other name. God Almighty, we remember us for good this season. I declare and I declare, if there is anyone that is sick tonight, I prophesy healing upon your body. If there is anyone close to you that is sick, I prophesy healing upon that person in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare in the name of Jesus that God will visit anyone that is having the symptoms of coronavirus or that have been, that have been, or that have been diagnosed already. I declare in the name of Jesus that all that have been tested positive for coronavirus that you know or that, that is around us and those we don't even know. I declare in the name of Jesus, God will give them healing in the name of Jesus. I pray any area of your life where you have any struggle, I decree the peace of God that passes all understanding will rule in your life, will rule in your situation in the name of Jesus. Any area of your life where you have any question that you have not been able to find answer to in this season, God Almighty will visit you. There shall be answers to your questions. There shall be, lip, there shall be deliverance to any form of captivity over your life and family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, we also pray for the world that, Lord, please have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Do not allow this plague. Do not allow, do not allow this epidemic. I mean, pandemic. Do not allow all of this, this noisome pestilence to tarry, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Have mercy, oh God. Forgive us and heal our lands. Heal our lands in North America. Heal, our, heal the lands in Africa. Heal the lands in Australia. Heal the lands in Europe. Oh Lord, heal the lands in Asia, in the Middle East, in Caribbean, Pacific Island. Father, heal them. Oh Lord, God Almighty, United Kingdom, heal them in the name of Jesus. All over the world, Father, let them be healing. Let, let South America be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of, let Greenland be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, arrest coronavirus and let it be well with the nations of the world. In the name of Jesus. Every satanic plan, every demonic plan against the church of Christ, every satanic agenda, demonic agenda, evil agenda against the body of Christ, I arrest it. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. Say the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. The Lord keep you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And the Lord shall have his countenance of mercy upon you. And the Lord give you peace in all the areas of your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful night's rest. Bye.